Hi, welcome to another lecture in Calculus 3. Today we are going to talk about coordinate systems. Let's do a quick review of what the topic is all about and then we come back to mathematical detail and example. So, you are familiar with a Cartesian coordinate system from middle school. You have a point in a plane and then you represent it by X and Y. Why is it called Cartesian? Well, in honor of uh, René Descartes, the 17th century French philosopher, mathematician, physicist, uh, with uh, lots of uh, philosophical ideas, uh, you probably have heard about his uh, famous expression, I think therefore I am, so that is a, uh, uh, the, appears at the beginning of uh, one of his philosophical tracts. Well, in, uh, pre-calculus and then in calculus you become familiar with the polar coordinates you're giving still the coordinates of a point in plane but now you are specified by distance from the origin and the angle that the x-axis has to turn to arrive at that point there are some other exotic uh, coordinate systems this one uh, two center bipolar coordinates get to be used in chemistry where there might be two atoms at this location and you want to give uh, coordinates of a certain point uh, with respect to these two centers. Then uh, we have a three-dimensional coordinate system. Uh, you have seen this in Calculus 2. You have x, y, z coordinate po uh, coordinates to specify the location of a point in space. What is going to be new for us is starting here at the cylindrical coordinates. In cylindrical coordinates we are uh, going to essentially marry the polar coordinates with the three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates. We are going to still have R and theta as before and Z as we had in 3D uh, Cartesian coordinate system. One step higher than this is the spherical coordinate system. In the spherical coordinate system we have one distance, uh, distance from the center and two angles. Typically, they are called uh, theta and phi. This looks complicated, but you are already using this thing in uh, GPS coordinate systems. Let's take a look at this thing. In GPS coordinate system, instead of the xy coordinate plane, you have the equator. And instead of the angle phi that we had in the spherical, which measures everything from the North Pole, here we are going to measure the angles from the equator going up or down. So this angle is called latitude in this case. We had another angle in uh, spherical that was called theta. Instead of that now we have longitude. Longitude is an angle that is measured from certain location in England and uh, going east and west is going to be a replacement for positive and negative. Uh, these circles you typically refer to them as meridians and this one uh, excuse me these circles you can refer to them as parallels and these uh, circles you refer to them as meridians well here's a picture that is perhaps a bit more descriptive of the situation so we have the equator down here north pole and south pole and latitude measures the angle going up uh, remember again phi measures from North Pole coming down but this one measures latitude measures from equator going up or down we have longitude instead of our theta here we have a longitude measured from a prime meridian that passes through certain location in England okay after uh, we start our calculations, we are going to come back to our very useful software, CalcPlug 3D, and try to practice some of these things in that situation. Let's go ahead and get started with the mathematical part of this thing. So, our lecture is about cylindrical and spherical coordinate systems. Uh, in pre-calculus, you become familiar with the Cartesian and polar. This is typically x and y, and this one typically is referred to as r and theta, and, and they go together as you see in this picture. So, if you look at the, any of these triangles, you can quickly see the relationship between these quantities. So if I have, for example, if I look at this triangle, and 
and write the ratio of the sides. I see that uh, x, this is the same as x, is going to be r cosine of theta and the y is going to be r sine of theta. Uh, relationship between r and x and y is a familiar Pythagorean theorem. Uh, this is hypotenuse is equal to the sum of square of the two legs and uh, tangent of theta is going to be ratio of the opposite to the adjacent so tangent of theta becomes y over x. One of the uh, big complications in a cylindrical, in a special, excuse me, in the polar coordinate system is that a point has multiple representations. So if I have a point at an angle theta, I can decide to go one more round and come back, and my angle now is going to be theta plus two pi, and I'm still at the same old location. So if I have r and theta, I can add any. Uh, even multiple of pi and I'm still at that location so 2k pi refers to turning around the center k times and arriving at the same location as before. <clears throat> A bit more confusing is use of negative radius. So there is a secondary way of referring to this point and that is with minus r at theta plus an odd multiple of pi. Let's see how does this uh, make sense. Suppose this is angle uh, theta. If I go an extra pi, no, my axis is pointing this way. On this axis, I can back up to the location that I call minus r. So minus r and theta plus pi refers to the same location that this one was referring to. And now if I add any multiple of 2 pi, I'm still referring to the same location. So uh, a point has a doubly infinite representations and this causes a bit of problems uh, in certain questions that we're going to look at later on. Uh, okay, now let's move on to our first item. First item is a cylindrical coordinate system. Cylindrical coordinate systems, well, Let's go ahead and draw our uh, uh, 3D setup. So that's our typical uh, Z axis up here, X, and let's suppose this one represents the Y axis. So we want to give uh, address for location in space. How do we do it? We say, okay, consider this X, Y plane. So this xy plane as before, let's uh, uh, maybe make it stand out like this, xy. On that xy, we are going to turn by a certain angle. This angle, we are going to call it theta. The distance from the z-axis, we are going to call it r, exactly like in polar coordinates. Then to go into the third dimension going up, straight up, we go to certain location in space. So that this the distance we go up is going to be uh, referred to as z. So we have three numbers as before, r, theta, and z, and that is going to be the three coordinates in that particular order. R is the distance from the z-axis. Theta is the angle we turned away from the x-axis uh, to arrive at that point. And z, the distance we went up or down to get to this location. So once we introduce one of these coordinate systems, we want to know how does it relate to the coordinate, uh, previous coordinate systems we had. So uh, in this case, the relationship is exactly like we had before, like x is still r cosine of theta because you can look at it here. You can look at this uh, triangle. Uh, hypotenuse is r. The adjacent angle is uh, theta and x becomes r cosine theta. How about y? Well, y is going to be this distance. y is going to be r sine of theta. 
And how about Z? Well, Z is uh, what we borrowed from Cartesian. So when we want to say there is no change here, Z is the same Z that we had in the Cartesian. If you want to go the other way, again, the formula is the same as before. R squared is going to be X squared plus Y squared. Uh, the tangent of theta, still same as before, is Y over X. And the Z of cylindrical is same as the Z of Cartesian. Okay, so. Uh, Cylindrical coordinate system, therefore, does not really represent a major obstacle for us. It's very similar to what we had uh, previously. Let's just practice a few uh, um, formulas and ask what's the uh, surface represented by these formulas. So the question is uh, sketch the following surfaces. What do we mean by the surface R, say, equal to 2? Uh, remember, R is the distance from Z axis. So Z axis is like an, essentially like an axis. And uh, we are saying standing 2, say, 2 feet or 2 meters away from that axis. So what would that be? Well, obviously, that's going to be a cylinder. So reason for the name of uh, this uh, coordinate system. So if we go two units away from the z-axis, we are going to arrive at a certain location. Now, it's your choice as to what z to pick and what theta to pick. So if you consider all these variety of possibilities, uh, you get a, a cylinder. So a cylinder is set of points, all of whose points uh, two units away from the axis of interest, in this case the z-axis. Okay, let's go take a look at uh, another one. Suppose we ask for the surface z is equal to 3. Well, z equal to 3, is, since, since z is exactly the same as what we had in the Cartesian, the answer will be exact same as what we had over there. So here's x and y. This is the xy plane. Z is referred to point 3 units above the xy plane. But we are not specifying what x and what y. So all points that are in this plane that are 3 units above the xy plane are going to be uh, part of our answer. So we have to specify a certain uh, region of space to indicate it. So typically draw a parallelogram to represent that plane, essentially a cut of that plane. Uh, another uh, example is, say, theta is equal to pi over 6. So pi over 6, that means turning from x, z plane by an angle of pi over 6, or 30 degrees. So suppose this is x, y, and z axes. And then we, on the x, y plane, on this plane, we are, uh, uh, let me change my mind and make this thing pi third so that my picture looks a little bit better. Pi third, so we are turning by pi third. Uh, this angle is pi third. Okay, that is my theta. How about r and how about z? Well, no specification made about that. So I can take any r that I want and I take any z that I want and that's going to give me a plane since I can choose z arbitrarily. I can go up or down. Uh, all the points on this plane are going to be uh, acceptable to me. Since R is uh, also arbitrary, I can go out as much as one, or I can go to the negative R. Remember, we had the discussion for uh, what the negative uh, distance means. 
So and this is a plane that goes both direction so that's the surface represented by just uh, theta is equal to pi third now let's go ahead and uh, do some uh, other examples. Suppose the question is uh, write the equation that is given in uh, Cartesian in cylindrical coordinates. So suppose the equation that we are given is x squared plus y squared minus say 2z squared is equal to some number say 5. So this is obviously Cartesian. Suppose we want to convert it to cylindrical. Well, uh, it's relatively easy. It is x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared. Uh, easy representation for that is r squared. We could have done individual substitution but this is faster this is just r squared well how about z squared well, there is no need to change anything the z in cylindrical and the z in cartesian are the same thing so this is the final result so this is cartesian and this is cylindrical Let's pause for a second and ask, do you remember from the previous lecture, what was this surface? you remember? Remember uh, the shape of this thing? It was a hyperboloid of how many sheets? Uh, it's hyperboloid of one sheet, so you can experiment with that. Uh, here's another example. Suppose we have the surface y equal to x squared. So this is a Cartesian equation uh, and the question is what is the cylindrical equivalent of it? Before we write that, do you remember what kind of a surface that's going to be? y equal to x squared in three dimension. Well of course in two dimension it is your trusty parabola. If you want to go in three dimension, does anybody remember what would be the graph of this? You notice there is no z, so z becomes arbitrary. So this was a, y equal to x squared was a parabola in in x y coordinate plane. When you go into three dimensions, z becomes arbitrary, so it becomes like a, what we call the cylinder, like a page that has been uh, uh, bent slightly in the shape of this uh, cylinder. Of course it goes up and down, infinite extent in the z direction and here that's how we are showing it. But if you want to write it in cylindrical, what do we do? Uh, well, just do the replacement. So y is r sine of theta, x is r cosine of theta, but this one is squared so it becomes r sine of theta is equal to r squared cosine square of theta. <coughs> the equation like this, sometimes you can simplify, but you have to be careful. If I divide by r, but you want to divide by that, you have to assume it's not zero. When you divide by that, what do you get? Well, one r goes away and we get sine of theta is equal to r uh, cosine square of theta. So, or you can say or r equal to zero. So that becomes the equation of the surface. Now we come back and see that when r is zero, theta equal to zero also fits in this equation. So whatever you wanted to represent by this, 
which was the z-axis already incorporated by that formula so we can simplify this formula and say sine of theta is equal to r cosine square of theta is going to represent both of these things so this becomes a bit of a redundancy we can simplify our equation like that now let's go to next level up next level up we want to talk about spherical coordinate systems spherical this is going to be truly new because I mean with the cylindrical essentially we said it's a marriage of polar and Cartesian so it wasn't uh, all that surprising and nothing about it was really any new but with the spherical things do start to change so we need more practice with this one spherical coordinate system we have uh, again start with uh, Cartesian So the Cartesian gives us our origin and our uh, directions and such. Now we want to specify a certain uh, location in the space. How do we do that? First of all, we have a distance. In this distance, to keep things simple, we are going to assume it positive. So rho is going to be distance from the origin. So rho uh, in this textbook is taken to be a non-negative number. Then if we drop a perpendicular to the xy, this distance will be exactly the same thing that we had with the cylindrical. So you could still call it r, but it's not part of the spherical coordinate system. It's just to remind you uh, how cylindrical fits into this picture that is uh, going to be the R for us. This uh, angle from x-axis to this line is part of our coordinate system. This is just same as a theta that we had before. So theta is an angle that is measured uh, positive going from x toward y exactly like in the polar or, or cylindrical and one full rotation of it will be uh, an angle of 2 pi of course you can turn around as many times as you want and uh, so if you go beyond 2 pi uh, you are starting a second rotation if you want to take the theta be negative then, then that means you are going in clockwise direction from the standing of a person who's standing on the z-axis his head up here and his foot down here he's going to see that the theta negative is going to go in that direction we still need a third coordinate and in, cart in a spherical coordinate system this angle is chosen uh, so angle between this uh, radii and the z-axis is going to be called phi so we have the angle phi now. Uh, angle phi starts at 0 on the z-axis. By the time you rotate all the way down to this south pole, phi reaches an angle of pi. So phi uh, at the north end is 0. At the south end, it is pi. OK, so these three are spherical coordinates so rho uh, excuse me, uh, rho theta and phi you have to make sure you don't mix these two are our spherical coordinates next uh, what is the connection between this and Cartesian so if this point is represented by rho theta phi or represented by x, y, and z. What's the connection between one and another? Well, it's easy. Rho is the distance of this point from the origin, and by distance formula, rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared.
one thing that's useful for us is what is R R is well exactly like uh, the case in cylindrical R squared still X squared plus Y squared so in case we do need what is X squared plus Y squared we can refer to it as R squared but remember R is not part of this triple here now uh, this angle Phi you can think about it as same as this angle here therefore R is going to be rho sine of theta so the R is equal to rho sine of phi now this is the hypotenuse if I multiply by the cosine of adjacent I'm going to get my x so now we use the fact that you remember x was r cosine of theta together and these two is going to tell me that x is r sine of phi cosine of uh, theta excuse me let me make a correction this is so this portion is the r rho sine of theta is this r if I multiply by another cosine I'm going to get my x how about y so y you remember y was uh, r sine of theta now r itself is rho sine of theta uh, sine of phi so rho sine of phi times sine of theta And then uh, finally we can say z this is same as z I can think about it as r this hyp uh, rho at the hypotenuse times cosine of this angle so z becomes rho cosine of phi So the three coordinates, rho, theta, and phi, go from the cylindric, from spherical to the Cartesian by these three formulas. If you want to go in reverse, we know that our rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. What if I want to figure out what uh, theta is? Theta as before if I take a ratio of y to x I'll recover tangent of theta so this is a formula we had before tangent of theta is equal to y over x how about if I want uh, phi well cosine of phi is a ratio of z to rho so I can write it like this cosine of phi is z over rho rho itself is square root of that quantity so I can write it x squared plus y squared plus z squared so let's have these uh, three formulas uh, let's uh, write this one as well rho was equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared tangent of theta is y over x cosine of phi is z over this quantity and there are many other relationships uh, like this you can write they all can lead you to the correct uh, answer now let's go ahead and uh, do some uh, practice problems for example a question might comes up uh, might come up as sketch surface rho equal to 2 what do you think that surface is so let's uh, pause for a second and uh, ask everybody to think about this very simple surface what do we mean by rho equal to 2 so remember 
rho was distance from the origin so if you say that rho is equal to 2 you're simply referring to the surface of a sphere whose radius is 2 so however you want to draw this so this is one way so the uh, radius of this thing is supposed to be 2 uh, what about uh, theta is equal to say pi third well, if I specify theta is equal to pi third, that's the angle from, so this is x, y, and z. Pi third, this is the angle pi third, uh, with the restriction that the phi is between 0 and pi. And rho is a positive quantity, we are going to be limited to this section of this plane. So it's kind of a half plane. So the uh, uh, answer is going to look like this plane. What if we give coordinate phi. Suppose I say phi is equal to pi over 4. You remember this was uh, the angle from the z-axis. So we are specifying an angle of pi over 4 from the z-axis. Now Theta is arbitrary and rho is some positive number. So I'm limited to this half cone whose half vertex angle is pi over 4. So we don't have the lower cone because we did not allow for our uh, rho become negative. So this becomes a half cone. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, some surface representation. Suppose uh, the question is to rewrite the following surface in uh, spherical coordinates. So suppose I have, I'm given an equation in uh, Cartesian x squared plus y squared is equal to 2z squared and then the question is well what is this in spherical uh, again you have uh, many uh, approaches you can take here uh, one of them is to re just re replace x y z by the conversion formulas that we had so remember x was rho sine phi cosine theta and so on so x was rho sine phi cosine theta y was rho sine phi sine theta so if I want to square them so it's going to be square of the first which is rho sine phi let's square them as we write them cosine square of theta plus rho squared sine square of phi sine square of theta and then if I factor rho squared sine square of theta phi I'll have cosine square theta plus sine square theta which we know is 1 rho squared sine square of phi if you remember r x squared plus y squared is r squared and r itself is rho sine phi uh, you would have come to this answer faster straight you go you come to this answer how about z well z was rho cosine of phi 
so of course z squared is going to be rho squared cosine square of phi our equation is that x squared plus y squared is equal to 2z squared so I'm going to write x squared plus y squared which is rho squared sine square of phi that's equal to 2 rho squared cosine square of phi we can divide both sides by rho squared assuming that rho squared is not zero rho is not zero and we arrive at sine square of phi is equal to two cosine square of phi if you divide both sides by a cosine uh, you get tangent square of phi is equal to two or tangent of phi is equal to plus or minus square root of 2 <clears throat> then you can go ahead and find out what that angle is so whatever that angle is that is your angle phi so we are going to have an angle in uh, first quadrant another angle in the second quadrant what does that mean tangent of phi is equal to plus radical 2 is refers refers to some angle uh, here so that's your phi and just like a uh, problem that we hit here uh, if pi was given to us it's going to represent a half cone so it's going to be a half cone up here and with the negative we are going to have the other half of the cone down here and we have now the full double cone if you remember from our lecture from the previous uh, section that was the equation of a double cone and then when you write it in the spherical it looks like just phi is equal to a pair of numbers that would be the equation of a double cone okay so we experimented with a variety of uh, pictures here now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our software our software we said okay uh, uh, our software uh, first of all how, how do we come to this uh, option on this software when you say add to graph many options come up one of them is a parametric surface parametric surface represents uh, one of some of the surfaces that we are considering uh, especially the ones given by uh, spherical coordinate system that would be the choice for you so uh, that is the option that I have here and when you look at this thing and this is exactly the equations of conversion formulas from uh, from spherical to Cartesian so what you see here the difference between this and what we had before is that uh, in this software instead of uh, phi and theta we have the two angles are called u and v so v is a replacement for phi and u is the replacement for theta so when we say uh, x and y and z are given by these three formulas the graph that we get is the graph of a sphere of course now you can go ahead and change your formulas and write whatever you want and get some uh, graphs of various type let me show you some other features that we have here just to refresh our memories as to what everything means uh, this one says show height to trace plane so what does that mean let's click on that now we are going to have uh, two so-called sliders if you play with them uh, let me see if I can get
was looking for this point and I have a hard time finding it in the, all the colorful picture that we have here. So uh, you remember we said we have u and v. u was theta and v was our phi. So if I change v, I'm going to go, you see, I'm going from top north pole to south pole. I'm going all the way down here. Uh, are you following with me? The, you're, you're tracking this point. So if I change v, I go from North Pole to South Pole. What if I change U? If I change U, I'm going to go on one of those parallels around the equator. So the equator is down here. When I change U, I'm going around the sphere. And here I show back up here and so on. You can go back and forth. And at any of these locations, you can get the V and move north or south. Uh, so uh, we are going to have uh, more examples from uh, the uh, spherical and cylindrical coordinate systems in the exercises and it's going to be uh, very important to um, practice as many of these uh, examples as we can so that we are ready for the future classes. Okay, uh, I hope you uh, followed along and uh, until the next lecture, good luck and God bless.